hardware devices. So if we talk about the hardware, so what is the mean of hardware? Hardware we can say in simply the physical part of your computer. The physical devices of your computer is known as hardware. Physical means what? Any device which you can see and which you can touch, that is the hardware. And in computer, that is keyboard, mouse, your monitor, and motherboard, RAM, hard disk. We have multiple hardware available. So we can categorize these hardware into two categories. Number first is inside a computer. Number second is outside a computer. So if you will see inside a computer, so means inside a system, we have CPU, central processing unit, we have memory, we have motherboard, power supply, hard drive, optical drive. We have these things available. Like Outside of a computer, we can connect this monitor, keyboard, mouse, TPS, printer, speaker. Like these things we can connect to, uh, via outside. Now, the first topic is our TPU, means central processing unit. So, CPU means what? Just see here. So, CPU also known as processor and CPU stands for central processing unit. It is a complex chip and in this picture, you can see here, this is looking like this and the use of that processor, use of that CPU is to process the data. Process the data means what? When you give the any input to your computer, like when you give any input, like if you give any input to your computer suppose if you just press any key if you click via your mouse if you give any input so that time your input will goes to firstly yeah okay now can anyone tell me when you give the input firstly on which device it will accept it or by which device it will fetch okay so just see when you give the input that time firstly it will hold on your ram ram Right, suppose I will just press one key from my keyboard or I click via mouse. So that time that input will goes to your RAM. And after that, that RAM will pass that data to your processor. And in simple language, we can also say the processor or CPU is a brain of computer. Right, brain of computer means it will process your data. Means what you want to do. Suppose I just press 2 plus 2 in my input. Right, so 2 plus 2 means what? Firstly, it will go to your RAM because RAM is a memory and this is a rule means if you want to place anything in computer or anywhere, so that time we have to need some space. We have to need memory. So that memory is RAM. Means when you give the input, firstly it will go to your RAM. RAM will hold that data and after that, that data will be fetched via this processor. Means RAM send this data to the processor. So after that, in this processor, processor will process the data. Means processor will see, okay, what you want to do? You want to uh, add this 2 with 2. So what will be the output? 4. So it will process the data. After that, after processing, it will send this data again to your RAM. Right? It fetch the data from the RAM. And again, it will write back this data to the RAM again. After that, this RAM will send the data to your output device. Right, output device means it can be your monitor, right? If we any is there any picture, so it can be monitor. If it is a music file, so it can be speaker also. If it is any print, so it can be your printer also. So that will send to your output device. This is how your system works. Right, so here you can see the processor role. Processor means it is the use to process the data. It processes all the instruction that you give to the computer. It accepts the data from a user and it start the processing and after I store the data, it will display the information. It will give you the output. Right? This is the use of processor. After that, this is CPU. Okay. Now in market, we have two popular manufacturer available of this CPU. First is Intel. Second is AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. And Intel Desktop means Intel has some series. That is Celeron, Pentium 4, and I think all of you heard about 4i3, 4i5, 4i7, or 4i9, like that word. In AMD, we have these series, Sampron, Athlon, Optron, Phenom, Ryzen, these are the series. Right, so means nowadays in market, in every computer, in every desktop or laptop, we have these two popular manufacturers used as a processor, like Intel and AMD. And in Intel, we have these series. The latest series is 4. 
means nowadays in market you will see only this four four i three four i five four i seven and four i nine okay now can anyone tell me uh which is the latest series of four right so i nine i nine okay and generation sir eleventh 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 okay anyone else yes anyone else okay actually generation is 13 generation right not 11 the latest generation is 13 4i9 13 generation and in amd if you will see so amd desktop processors sampron athlon optron phantom and ryzen and ryzen is the latest and same thing in ryzen we have ryzen 9 is the latest series ryzen 9 Right, this is the latest series. And one more question: If you want to check your system configuration, like the processor information, so how you can check? Sir, uh, in the uh, in the search, after pressing Windows key, in the search box we can type in specs or specification, and uh, we'll get the data that we need. Okay, just a minute. What should I have typed? Sir, so specification or specs. About device. Hi, uh, system information should work also. System information. Right here we can see. This is a process information. Right here we have four i five eleven generation and here. Right eleven generation. And the speed of my processor is three point one zero gigahertz. We will also discuss about that. Means what's the mean of this three point one zero gigahertz four four and eight logical processor? What is the mean? we will discuss about but how to check first thing is you can check like this and to open this from we have one more command also available means via this command also you can open here you have to type ms info means you have to type window r then ms info 32 why this command we can open same from so i just close that and if i will do okay so here you can see ms info 32 one thing next thing we can open task manager task manager in task manager we can also see the information and here you have to click on performance and in cpu here you can see 4i5 11 generation available in my system 3.10 gigahertz is the clock speed and all the information you can see here with utilization with the speed processes runs on that processor threads handles everything you can see or up time also and one more way to open that you have to right click on your this pc right click on that and click on property right right click on this pc click on property and here you can see that process i inform 4i5 11 generation right so we have mainly three ways by which we can check the information of system of processor of ram also here we can also see the ram information okay so is that clear next is specification of processor right specification of processor means what if you want to purchase the processor right if you want to select the processor so that time which things you have to see there means the specification and suppose if you want to purchase any like if you want to purchase a chair or the table or anything if you want to purchase so that time we see something like in chair we just see the comfortable Means how the um, chair is comfortable. All few things means the height or the length. Everything we will see there. So the same thing is there. If you want to purchase or if you want to select the processor, so that time we have to see few things. So first is clock speed. Clock speed means what? Clock speed is specify the speed of process. Means clock speed is the speed of processor in which. a processor complete an instruction at a time and it is step typically measured in megahertz and giga and i think all of you seen that means in my system that is 3.10 giga 3.10 giga right so here you can say it is typically measured in megahertz and giga and the range of clock speed from means in market from starting to uh, nowadays the in latest processor that speed is available Means it is started from the 66 megahertz 
एंड नाउ डेज इन मार्केट इन लेटेस्ट प्रोसेसर फोर आई नाइन थर्टीन जनरेशन दिस स्पीड इज अवेलेबल फाइव पॉइंट जीरो मीन ऑफ मेगा हार्ट एंड बीगा हार्ट सपोज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एनालाइज एनीथिंग लाइक इफ आई विल टेल यू मीन I have one person, and the speed of that person is 10 kilometer per hour. 10 kilometer per hour. So we can say, okay, that person will cover that 10 kilometer uh, within 60 minutes, within one hour. That is the speed. We can see that. So what is the mean of that mega hertz in my system? That is the speed. So how I can analyze means how much data it will process in one second or in one minute. How I can say that? What is the mean of mega hertz and giga hertz? If I will tell you the working of processor, right? Working of processor means what? The processor works in four steps. Means it will follow one cycle, and in this cycle, firstly it will fetch the data, as we also seen in that example, which I give you. Means firstly you just give the input, then it will goes to your RAM, then it will fetch via your processor. So firstly your processor will fetch the data from the RAM. This is first process. After that. Means how your processor will process the data. So firstly, it will fetch the data from the RAM, then it will decode the data. Right? Decode means you give your data in your language, like in the English or any other language, or uh, means in picture format or in MP3 format. You give that data, but system or your machine understand only binary language, zero one format. So firstly, it will convert that data into that binary language, into that format. so that is called decode after that it will process the data it will process the data means after that it will just see what you want to do you want to play the music if you want to add 2 plus 2 or if you want to do anything it will process the data after that it will write back the data to your ram right back right this is the process By which your processor works. So, firstly, fetch will earn. Uh, it will fetch the data from the RAM. Then it will decode the data. Then it will process the data. Then write back that data to the RAM. And after that, again start the same process. Again fetch the data, decode, process, write back. Again fetch the data. So this is the processor cycle. This is called processor cycle. Processor cycle. Right. So. We can see this is the processor cycle. Now understand about that means megahertz and gigahertz. Megahertz and gigahertz. If I write one megahertz and one gigahertz, so one gigahertz means what? It will ah uh, cover around one billion cycle. Okay, one billion cycle actually. One billion cycle per second. If your processor speed is one megahertz, that means your processor will cover that one million cycle in one second. And what is the mean of one million in normal format, like in crore or in lakh? Ten lakh. Ten lakh. Perfect. So that means if your processor speed is one megahertz, so your processor will cover ten lakh cycle per second. This cycle, this fetch, decode, process, and write back. And one gigahertz means if your processor speed is one gigahertz, so it will cover one billion cycle. One billion cycle per second. And one billion means. Yes, ten lakh, sir. No, no, not one million. One billion. One billion means ten uh, lakh. Now one billion. Hundred crores. Yeah, hundred crore. Perfect. Right, hundred crore. So you see, my processor speed is three point one zero gigahertz. So that means my processor can perform three hundred and Ten crore cycle per second. At three one zero crore cycle per second, my processor can perform. This is the speed of your processor. This is the speed of your computer. Right now, understand that megahertz and gigahertz is how you will analyze that things in your system. Also, 
if you will see the speed and that is suppose 3 megahertz or uh, sorry 3 gigahertz or 4 gigahertz so you can analyze okay my system can perform 400 crore cycle per second yes now is that clear for everyone yes sir clear yeah yes sir it's clear oh okay. after that next thing is after clock speed next specification is cache memory okay i think everyone uh, heard this word like cache cache files also you heard so what is the mean of cache or cache memory okay now see if you not inside in the ram it is closer to the core of processor now see actually what is the mean of cache memory as we discussed also when you give the input input and i also told you one a rule is if you want to place any data if you want to place anything in your system so that time you have to need some memory so when you give the input we have the memory we have ram right it will hold on this ram after that this ram will send the data means now on this ram data is not available it will send this data to your processor processor and suppose processor will take one millisecond or one second to process that data so till that time where data will be placed because we have to need memory there also in processor so this cache memory is the on memory of processor cache memory right and it is available uh, closer to the core of processor so it is available inside the processor cache memory and after that after processing that will send this data to ram again and then give you output right so first thing is cache memory available inside your processor second thing is cache memory is the fast memory okay and a small memory always in size you can see here also and the size available 36 mb is the maximum that is small in size and that provide high speed data access to a computer processor means it will uh, it is the on memory of processor so that always processor will access the data or processor will process the data on this cache memory next thing when this processor will process the data that time always this processor will also create one we can say like a cache file cache file we can say like a log file cache file it will create always one cache file suppose first time when you turn on your system and after turning on you just over try to open your google chrome right so you give the input means you double click on that google chrome or you right click and then click on open after that it will go to your ram then it will go to your processor processor will process that means how to open that chrome right first time it will take around uh, uh let's take three seconds right it took three seconds to process that means to open that after that it will go to ram and it will give you the output means on your screen you can see the chrome next time next time when you will close that chrome again and when you will try to open that chrome again what will happen input ram and in this processor this processor first it will check in this cache memory is there any cache file available for that chrome right so if that file is available if that cache file is available so it will see how to open that so there is the map how to open so that means in that time the processor will not uh, need to means process that data it will just open that cache file and give the output so that time what will happen firstly it will took three seconds so next time it will took around two second or one second only because there is one path like suppose if i will tell you you have to go uh, one location like uh, i just tell you you have to go to delhi in delhi location you have to go and there is one shop and from that shop you have to purchase one laptop right i just tell uh, you that thing so what will happen firstly you will go there and you will try to search that uh, uh, shop where it is available and suppose you just took one hour to search that shop and you purchase the laptop suppose next time when i will tell you to purchase the same laptop from the uh, same shop so what will happen you have the map in your mind 
you knows how to search that file we uh, search that uh, shop where it is available so directly you will go there so next time what will happen next time it will take around 30 minute or means on the time of your traveling it will take only that time right so same thing is there means cache memory is also working like that means always when your data will go on this cache memory your processor will process the data that time after processing the data the processor will create one cache file and that file will store in this cache memory and this is a temporary memory so that means when you turn off your system when you shut down your system that time all data will be clear means next time when you will turn on your system that time cache memory will be clear right there will not any data available then again it will process the data again it will create the cache file so every time it will create cache file when you turn on your system or when you restart your system this is how your cache memory works and in cache memory we have three types of cache memory available like l1 cache l2 cache l3 cache we have three types of cache memory and the size of that cache memory available in processor from 8 kb to 128 kb l2 cache from 256 kb to 32 mb and in l3 cache that is 1 mb to 36 mb only that much size is available right okay now let me know in cache memory if you have any doubt no sir no sir okay perfect no, so next thing is okay, next is specification is fsb so fsb means what fsb short for front side bus so fsb is also known as the processor bus memory bus system bus and connect the cpu with the main memory and ltp now first thing is what's the mean of bus so bus means what if you ever seen your motherboard okay anyone is there who ever seen the motherboard of your computer yes sir okay anyone else Yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So in motherboard, if you see, so in back side also and in front side also, you will see there are some lines there, right? Some uh, we can say integrated lines, right? You can see some lines there, and there is about thousands of lines available. There. So what's the mean of that lines? Actually, in that lines. If you see on motherboard, motherboard is motherboard is a PCB, printed circuit board. Means circuit is printed there. So circuit means on that circuit we have some component available, like uh, RAM slot, we have uh, hard disk slot, we have processor slot. Means everything available on that motherboard. So to connect that component, to connect that component, suppose in motherboard we have this RAM slot. This is the RAM slot. This is for RAM. and we have this for processor this is for processor right so you just uh, insert the ram and then you insert the processor also then how that processor and this ram will compare with each other so for that we have to need the connection means we have to need the media we have to need the wire so in that case we have some integrated wire available integrated wire means these lines means all lines or means every component is connected with other component uh, component via these lines and these lines is known as bus bus and we have multiple buses available and I, as i uh, said you means about thousands of buses available there right so we don't need to understand all the buses because th uh, there is thousand buses so if you are a manufacturer in that case only you have to understand that but we are not a manufacturer we are the means engineer so only we have to understand few things how, we, how your component work so fsb means what fsb means the front side work it will connect your processor with your main memory means with your ram so this is the bus this is that wire by which your ram is connected with your processor right when you give the input firstly this ram will accept that uh, input and how this ram will send this data to processor via this fsb front side bus so the speed of fsb is also matter fsb speed is also matter why because 
सपोज इफ योर आर रैम स्पीड इज टू गुड दिस योर रैम एंड रैम स्पीड इज टू गुड एंड योर प्रोसेसर क्लॉक स्पीड इज ऑल्सो टू गुड दिस इज सी पी यू स्पीड इज ऑल्सो टू गुड बट योर एफ एस बी स्पीड इज नॉट गुड वॉट विल हैपन इन लास्ट मीन्स द आउटपुट विल गिव टेक मच टाइम right so we have to need this fsb speed also so for that that fsb speed is depend on the processor when you will purchase the speed or oh, sorry purchase the processor so that time on that processor also you will you can see that fsb speed right so always when you purchase the cpu or processor so that time also you have to see this fsb speed means how much is speed available there. Right, and the speed range is available from the 66 megahertz to 3200 mega. Right, and that speed means the cycle. Here we have this cycle. Means for FSB, the cycle is different. Here, this RAM will send the data to CPU, and then the CPU again just write back this data to your RAM. This is the one uh, cycle. Right, this is one cycle. And megahertz means one million cycle per second, and There is not any gigahertz available, so we can say. Right, so this is the range of FSB. Now let me know, is that clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, that's standard. Only one is to clear. No, sir, it's clear. Yeah, it's clear, sir. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yes, okay, now see next thing. The next word is four and thread. Okay, four and thread means what? If you will see in my system also. So, okay, task manager, I have to open. In task manager, if you will see, so here you can see in my processor, I have four four elements, right? And In your laptop or at the time of purchasing your mobile also, you heard about that word. The Octa Core processor and Quad Core processor, Dual Core processor. So you heard that one. So what is the mean of core? So core means what? We can say nowadays in market we have processor is not available. That is micro processor, right? Nowadays in market the processor is a micro processor. Micro processor means what? You see this processor. This is your processor, but inside in this processor, we have multiple processor available. We have multiple micro processor available, right? So you can see here, a core is a small CPU or processor built into a big CPU. That is big CPU, and inside the CPU, we have like if you have octa core. So octa core means what? There is eight core available. One, two, three. And four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have eight core available. Eight core means this is the CPU. Means independently, it can perform all the computational tasks. Means every core is not depend on any other core. It can work independent. So that is the mean of core. So core means what? Or we can also say by core we can perform the multitasking. means you can perform multiple task at the same time and sub in my system also you can see i'm working on my ppt in backend cisco bevex also working and here i can also open that uh, task manager or settings also and excel file also open so this is the mean of multitasking so how this multitasking is uh, possible for that we have to need multiple processor so that processor is a core so core is a physical processor we can say that is a physically available and a core is a small cpu built into a big cpu and it can perform independently all the computational tasks right that is the mean of core now what is the mean of thread so thread means what thread is a logical version of core right thread is a logical or virtual version of your core logical or virtual means what Thread is a technology. It is not available physically. It is a technology. Means 
from Pentium 4 series of processor, Intel launched one technology that is hyperthreading. The name of the technology is hyperthreading. Hyperthreading means what? After this technology, your single core can perform two tasks at a time. Right? Your single core, if you have one core, it can perform two tasks at same time. Two tasks means there is two thread. Two thread. And if you will see in my system, there is also you can see in my system there is four core available, but I have eight logical processes. Means for single core, I have two thread. This logical processor is two thread. Right, so this is a mean of thread. So core and thread means what? Core is a physical processor which is available physically in your system inside your big CPU. But thread means thread is only the technology. That is a virtual version of core. Why this technology? Nowadays, your processor or your single core can perform two tasks. So that means in my machine, there is four core and eight thread. Eight thread means at the same time, I can perform eight tasks. When I will open ninth task, that time my first task will uh, close. Right? It will inactive. That is how your process of work. Four and thread. Okay, now let me know. Any doubt or is that clear? Four and thread. Clear, sir. Clear, sir. Okay. okay. Clear, sir. Okay. So now, after that, next thing is features of Intel processor. Features of Intel processor means what? Means why we have to purchase an Intel processor. And I think all of you heard one thing more. Means AMD is not best for corporate or for office laptop. AMD is best for gaming. Right? Uh, who heard that word? Anyone is there? Yes. Anyone heard that lines? Means uh, AMD is best for gaming. Yes, sir. I have. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there is a reason why. So firstly, we have to understand these feature of Intel processor. Why always you will see in office laptops that uh, Intel processor there in most of cases, and in gaming laptops you can see that AMD processor. So first feature of Intel processor. That is EIST. EIST means what? Enhanced Intel Speed Step Technology. And why this technology? Your Intel processor can manage the CPU core frequency and voltage. That means every time your Intel processor will manage the clock speed. Means how much clock speed is required for any process. Only that much clock speed it will give you through that process. It will not give the complete clock speed. So, if I will compare, suppose I have one laptop and one more laptop I have. In first laptop, I have Intel processor and in second, I have AMD. Right, and on Intel processor, suppose I run Google Chrome, I open that Google Chrome. So, that time what will happen if my system speed is 4 GHz? 4 GHz. So this Intel processor will give only that much pro uh, processor speed to this uh, Google Pro, which is required. Like suppose 500 megahertz required for that. Like 500 megahertz required for that. So only 500 megahertz this Intel processor will give to that uh, Google Pro. And if you open any other application, that time it will give the next means suppose 500 or 1 gigahertz is required for that. So that much it will give that time. But in AMD, what will happen? Suppose in AMD, when I will open this Google Chrome and the speed is same, 4 gigahertz. So this AMD processor will give the complete uh, speed of uh, this processor to this Google Chrome, 4 gigahertz. To open that Google Chrome and to run that Google. So that means this Intel processor can work for longer time Right means if you want to use that Intel processor for 10 hour, 12 hour, or 24 hours, 
so you can use this Intel processor. But this AMD processor will heat up after means if the processor is new, if your laptop is new. So that time it can work for six to eight hours. But if your laptop is old, so that time after four or five hours, it will heat up. Why? Right? Because it can't manage this speed. This is the same. Like suppose if I tell you, means you have to go to a uh, means one shop that is available means uh, after ten kilometer. That shop is available after ten kilometer. You have to go there. And we have two person. One person goes there like uh, via walking. This is normal speed. One kilometer per hour speed. There it goes. So it can go there. But suppose second person just tried to run in full speed and then it is just try to reach there. So what will happen? That time after 10 minutes or after 20 minutes only, that will heat up. So this man has to uh, need to rest. Right, so the same thing is here. Intel processor is managed the processor speed. So that means it can work for a longer time. But AMD processor doesn't uh, uh, manage the frequency. So that means it can't work for a longer time. But in gaming case, suppose if you run the game on this Intel processor, so what will happen? That Intel processor we will try to give only the least size, least speed of uh, that game. Which is required. The minimum speed it will give that. But this AMD will give the higher speed means it will give the complete speed. So in that case, game will work smoother on this AMD processor. So that's why this is the line in market means AMD processor is best for gaming because in game we have to need the higher speed which we have available. And Intel is best for the corporate purpose. Means if you work for the 24 into 7 or if you work for the uh, 10 hour or 12 hour daily. So in that case, we have to need the Intel process. Right? That is the case. And you can also see in my laptop, there is Intel process. And uh, daily on daily basis, I use this laptop for 10 to 12 hour daily. Right? And sometimes it can uh, it is for... 14 hours or 16 hours also, but never it heat up. Right, so that's why Intel is best for corporate purpose and AMD is best for gaming. Okay, now is that clear? PISP. Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now the next is EDB. EDB means what? Execute disable bit. Execute disable means what? Why this feature Intel processor will prevent to copy the malicious code into the computer memory. Malicious code means the virus. Right? It will prevent to copy the virus to, into the computer memory. Okay, the next thing is or uh, you can see or uh, more oh, sorry, you can say or uh, some can say means why we have to need ADB. We have antivirus available. Right? We can install the antivirus, that is okay for me. And the next thing is in every operating system or in Windows, every operating system, we have one feature, Windows Defender. By this Windows Defender, you can prevent the malicious code to pop into your computer memory. Then why we have to need this EDB? EDB prevent to copy the malicious code at booting time also. Booting time means what? If I will tell you, booting time means what? Suppose when you turn on your system, Mm -hmm. when you turn on your system when you press the power on button that time in backend what will happen your BIOS will activate first place. in your system BIOS will activate BIOS we have also the topic BIOS we will also discuss about that uh, BIOS in briefly matter there but for now BIOS will activate BIOS will perform uh, some feature like post post means power on self -care. that means BIOS will check all the available hardware means which hardware is available and which hardware is not available means suppose if your uh, system has uh, keyboard is not available there so it will give you the error for that if uh, hard disk is not available so your system will give you the error if hard disk is not detected or something like that 
so this bios will perform the post the next thing after performing this post next step is bootstrap loader bootstrap loader this is also the feature of bios means bios will start this bootstrap loader and by this bootstrap loader it will find the operating system it will start to search the uh, operating system in your hard disk in your memory if operating system is available so then it will load the operating system if operating system is not available then it will give you the error like operating system is not found something uh, error it will give you so in this process from this process like when you press the turning on button from here to this process like from loading right till that the process is known as booting process booting process this process right and at that time we can see here we don't have any operating system on there means when you load the operating system then your operating system will start to work but before that we don't have any operating system available there. so if we don't have any operating system that means we can't use any antivirus here right we can't use window defender also there so how we can prevent the virus that time so for that we have to need this feature with that time at booting time your intel processor will prevent to copy the malicious code into your computer now question is okay that time we don't have any operating system so how your virus or how your malicious code will copy because as we heard that word means from internet we can download the virus we can download the malicious code but that time when you are booting that time suppose if you have any memory available if you have any external device available like your PD, uh, pdme pen drive and usb device is available there so suppose in your pen drive there is any malicious code or any virus file available right so automatically that virus file will copy the over, uh, uh, system in your memory so that time this processor feature this udb will prevent to copy that uh, virus or that file into your computer memory right so this is a use of your udb okay now is that clear udb Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. Okay, perfect. After that, next feature is hyperthreading. We also discussed that this hyperthreading is the technology used by some Intel, and nowadays it is also available in AMD processor. And the use of hyperthreading is that allow a single microprocessor means to your single core to act like two separate processor to like act as two core. to the operating system and the application program that means is by this technology we can do the multitask and in note you can see here uh, in intel processor the name of the technology is hyperthreading but in amd the name of the technology is hypertransport and that technology that hyperthreading technology is used in intel processor from pentium 4 right till pentium 3 there is not any technology there is not any concept of a uh, uh, thread available right so that is hyperthreading next feature is smart cache now smart cache means what smart cache in simple if i will tell you so smart cache means l3 cache as we discussed we have three types of cache memory available l1 cache l2 cache and l3 cache so l3 cache is known as a smart cache why so yes if you will see in this picture so we have this processor and in this processor we have four core available right 4 0 4 1 2 3 we have four core available so if you will see the work how this cache memory or how that l1 l2 l3 cache memory works for that core so always if you have l1 or l2 cache so that will divide into your core for your core like suppose if in my system there is 128 kb 
at 128 kb of l1 cache available so what will happen if i have four ports so it will divide into four parts in four part what will happen 64 32 so for my first port it will divide for 32 kb for second 32 kb for third 32 and for 32 also it will divide into four part means that first port second port third port means every port can only use this 32 kb in l2 cache the same thing suppose if we have four mb available so it will divide into four part for l first port 1 mb for second 1 mb third 1 mb and for fourth 1 mb so that means it will divide into four part like that suppose if i want to uh means distribute the pen and in my class there is 10 student available i want to distribute that pen to everyone so the first way is i can provide uh, if i have 10 pen so that means i can provide only one pen to each uh, student so first way is i have to provide one pen to each one that is second way is i can create one pool pool means what i can create one box and in that box i will place all the pen all the 10 pen and i will say that and suppose if any student will have to a uh, need for any pen so that time you can use that pen and after that you can uh, just place uh, place that uh, pen again on that box so one way is that so that is for this l3 cache if you will say here so that l3 cache is shared for every core every core means if the size of that l3 cache is 8 mb 8 mb so that 8 mb is shared for every core i suppose if uh, you open any single task single task means you open on the google chrome you turn on your system and you open google chrome that time we have only single task so that means only core zero will work because for core 1 2 3 we don't have any work so they will free only core zero will work so that time that single core that core zero can use the complete size this 8 mb for this l3 cache when this core one will start to work then the size will divide into two parts or means we can't say it will not divide actually means that can you suppose google chrome is just taking a uh, 3 mb so it can use 3 mb and 5 mb is left for core one core one can use 5 mb so that means it is shared means any core can use means any size like 1 mb 2 mb 3 mb that is not divided but l1 cache and l2 cache is divided into four part right so if it will divide so if you will see for l2 cache suppose so 1 mb is available for each core only 1 mb can used by this core any core can't use and suppose if you open only google chrome that time we have three core free so only 1 mb can use this core zero that core zero can't use any other size like 1 mb or 2 mb the free size it can't use it can use only that size which is available for that core that is the use of this smart cache means smart cache this l3 cache is shared now let me know is that smart cache is clear or any doubt clear okay else can you clear sir clear yes okay next feature is virtualization right virtualization means what virtualization means to create a virtual version of the device or resources right virtual version means suppose if you will see the example like in my system in my laptop i have windows 10 available at windows 10 available and that is windows operating system or we can say for any operating system we have to need at least single resource single resource means we have to need one cpu one ram and one hard disk one network adapter right so we have to need every hardware means sing uh, sing we have to need one hardware at least for 
this operating system or any operating system we can say now the question is suppose if i want to use mm, two operating system at the same time like i want to use linux also or i want to use windows 11 also so that time we have to need two hardware at the same time means we have to need two processor two ram two hard disk two network adapter and in normally we can't we can't use that windows also we can do dual boot we can do multi boot also in laptop means we can install multiple operating system at the same time but we can't use at the same time if i want to use suppose if i install two operating system in my laptop in my laptop now windows 10 available windows 11 if i want to use windows 11 that means i have to firstly uh, turn off my machine or oh, sorry restart my machine and that time i have to choose windows 11 then if i want to use windows 10 again i have to restart and then i have to choose windows 10 so means at the same time i can't use the two operating system if i want to use so that is the solution that is virtualization so via virtualization we can create the virtual version of the device means we can create the virtual cpu virtual ram virtual hard disk virtual network adapter and that means if we have more than one hardware available so we can use more than one operating system also so for that virtualization we have some application available like uh, vmware workstation virtual works oracle work hyper v like that is the application on which we can create the virtual version of that hardware and then we can install the operating system that is called virtualization right now is that clear virtualization Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. The next. Yes sir. Okay. Next feature is Turbo Boost technology. Now, what's the mean of Turbo Boost? So, Turbo Boost technology is a microprocessor technology, and it is developed by Intel. That means it is not available in AMD. And the use of that PBT means Turbo Boost technology that automatically raises. A certain of its processor operating frequency means by this technology, this technology can increase the clock speed of your processor. How? So just see. Suppose if in my laptop, in my laptop, if you will see, so here you can see the base speed is 3.10 GHz. And that is my base speed. The second speed is my TBT. Turbo boost technology means this technology can increase this clock speed from this 3.10 to 3.11. That is not too much, but uh, in some laptops you can also see that size like the 3.10 to 4.0 or point, uh, 4.2 4.5. That one also see in my laptop that is not too much. So if you will see the use. So how we can see? So suppose if you have this system, and in this system we have four gigahertz speed available. That is base speed, and four point five gigahertz is the TBT turbo boost technology. So what will happen? Suppose if I open multiple application at the same time, game also, and multiple things I open, and that four gigahertz is not enough for every task. What will happen in that case? Your system will stop. Your system will hang it, right? So that time, what will happen if your laptop has this TBT speed, turbo boost speed? So that time, your processor or will automatically increase the clock speed, or automatically it will raise the clock speed from the base speed to turbo boost speed, right? Means it can raise this speed from four gigahertz to this four point five gigahertz. And by this 4.5 gigahertz, it will try to handle all the process, all the application, all the tasks which you open. That is the use of that turbo boost technology, right? And we can also compare like that. Suppose if we have this wall, this is a wall, and this is the person. And if I will tell to this person to jump from this wall, right? To 
jump from this wall so what will happen it will take around suppose 10 seconds this is a normal cap and suppose if i will create any pair like uh, if mm -hmm. there is one snack right so that time what will happen automatically this person will jump from this wall within 5 seconds that time it will not take this 10 seconds so what has happened there so that is called tvt servo boost technology right and in this processor that time only that tvt speed will work that time when this base speed will not enough for that process that process is running um, is that time only that time it will work until that until that 4 gigahertz will not completely use that TBT will not be right now. Just let me know that clear. Servo boost technology.